Let's try the following number theory problem. Recall, we define the Mobius function as follows. We take a positive integer n, okay, I consider its prime factorization, mu of n, so we'll be equal to 1 if n is equal to 1, we'll be equal to 0 if some prime squared divides n, otherwise it's going to be minus 1 to the k, where k is the number of prime factors. So what's happening here? We'll have mu of n equal to 0, okay, if some square of a prime divides n, otherwise what we're doing is counting whether there are an odd or even number of prime factors in the factorization. Okay, and there's no exponents. Next, we define sigma sub k on n as the sum over the divisors of n of d to the k. We want to calculate s sub k of n, where this is defined as the sum over the divisors of n of mu of d, sigma sub k of d. Now, before we get to the answer and the proof, let's play around with s sub k a little bit. It'll be sufficient to play around with s sub 1. So what do we do? First, I'll consider s of p, where p is a prime. Now, the only divisors here are going to be 1 and p. So I have mu 1 sigma 1, mu p sigma p. Mu 1 is equal to 1 by definition. Sigma 1 is equal to 1. Okay, there's only one divisor there, which is 1. So the sum is 1. For mu of p, Okay, mu of p, there's a single prime factor, so I get a minus 1. Then the sum of the divisors of p is going to be 1 plus p. So I work this out, I get a minus p. If we take a power of a prime, same idea. Okay, I have mu 1 sigma 1, mu p sigma p, then mu p squared, sigma p squared, and then so on till we get to mu of pk, sigma pk. What happens here, though, you'll note, okay, same as before for the first two terms, but if I take mu of a square or higher power, that goes to zero. So all these higher terms drop out, and again, I'm going to get a minus p. One more. Let's try a product of two primes. So here, I have s of p1, p2. Same idea. The divisors are 1, p1, p2, and p1, p2. So we work this out. So we'll get a 1 here. As we did before, I'll have a minus 1 plus p1. Here I'll have a minus 1 plus p2. Then here we're going to have, okay, this has got two factors, so I get a 1. Then the sum of the divisors of p1, p2 is 1 plus p1 plus p2, p1, p2. When we work this out, we get p1 times p2. And to make this suggestive, I write it as minus p1 minus p2. Here's the answer. Pick any positive integer n. Okay, we take its prime factorization. Okay, so here we'll have m distinct prime factors. For any k, s sub k on 1 is equal to 1. Okay, that's easy to check straightforward. For n greater than 1, s sub n, what we're going to do is take each distinct prime factor, take the product, but each factor gets a minus sign. So I'll have p1 through pm times minus 1 to the number of distinct prime factors. So we just strip out the exponents. For s sub k of n, okay, same idea, except now we strip out the exponents, replace each of them with k. Now, to show this, it'll be enough to assume k is equal to 1, and then you can just go through and replace the k's. Our first step, we're going to show that the value of s doesn't change if we strip out the exponents. Then we'll just calculate for s on a product of distinct primes. Now, to see this, okay, we just take the definition. So s of n, okay, we're going to have s on prime factorization. We're going to take the sum over the divisors, okay, the prime factorization, mu of d, sigma of d. Now, as we saw on the previous board, the only sums I have to consider are those which have no squares in them. Okay, if we have a square of a prime, the mu is going to go to zero, and then that term vanishes. So all I have here are going to be divisors of p1 through pn. With that, you note, all we're considering now is s of p1 through pn. So the point here is, 
mu is going to take out any higher powers of the primes. So our first step, we can strip out the exponents. So now all I have to do is calculate this thing here. That we'll be able to do using induction. Okay, so we know that s of 1 is equal to 1. So for the induction step, what I want to show is, okay, we have a product of primes. Okay, they're distinct. I want to show that I can peel one of those off just by multiplying out in front with a minus sign. Again, we're just going to write out the definition. Now, here what I can do is break this up into two sums. We'll have okay, the divisors that just divide P1 through PM, so there's no PM plus 1 factor. And then we'll have those that have a PM plus 1 factor. Now note here, I'm only going to consider divisors of P1 through PM. We're guaranteeing a PM plus 1 factor, so I don't have to put it in here, I'm just going to put it in each of these terms. Now, you'll note, for mu of d PM plus 1, that has one extra prime, so that's going to be minus 1 times mu of d. Then, I have to calculate the sigma of d p of the m plus 1. Now again, sigma is going to be a sum over the divisors of d p of the m plus 1. So we break it up into two sums as we did here. So we'll have those, okay, the sum of the divisors of d, so that will get a 1. Then we'll have the sum of the divisors of the d times p m plus 1. So we just put in a p m plus 1 factor. So with that, we can factor out a sigma d leave me with a factor of 1 plus PM plus 1. Now we put that all together, that's going to give me a minus 1, a 1 plus PM plus 1. Then what's left over is just going to be the sum over the divisors of PM1 through PM. So that's going to give me SP1 through PM. Okay, note S of P1 through PM is what I also have with this sum. Now, when we simplify this, what comes out is going to be minus PM plus 1, S of P1 through PM, as promised. Then with induction, we can build up on the number of primes. So that's going to give us our rule from here. Here's a better argument. Better because it handles the general situation. Okay, we start with the definition. But F, a function of the positive integers, call it multiplicative if F of 1 equals 1 and f of m times n equals f of m times f of n whenever m and n are relatively prime. So what this says is that I can build up f just by knowing its values on the powers of primes. Now, note, mu is multiplicative, sigma sub k is multiplicative, the product is multiplicative. We'll show in a second that each s sub k is multiplicative. So, we get our formula on the previous board just by noting that if I take s on a power of a prime, we just get minus that prime, and then we build up. Now, to show that s of k is multiplicative, let's pick m and n relatively prime. Okay, we write out the definition. So we're going to sum over divisors d of m n, mu d, sigma sub k d. Now, because m and n are relatively prime, if I have a divisor of m times n, I could split that into the part that divides m and the part that divides n. So, factor each d out as d1, d2. And then we use the multiplicative property to pull these apart. Now, we collect terms. So I'll put the d1 terms together, the d2 terms together. And then I could split this into two sums. First sum, just going to be divisors of m, so I'll get s sub km. Second one is the divisors of n, so I get s sub kn. And we have that s sub k is multiplicative once we know that s sub k of 1 is equal to 1. Then we just build up. 